Welcome back to the vlog. This will cover two days of play over at Capitol Casino here in Sacramento, California. Buying for the 1-3 game for $500. I've been sitting around for about 20 minutes just twiddling my thumbs as everyone else is playing. Um, I like to play my first hand fairly aggressively and after I see uh, four limpers come into this pot, it's a green light for me to put in a raise, so I make it $25 with 10 9 offsuits. I do not recommend this, of course, but I'm just taking advantage of my image at this time. Everyone folds except for one player who is a, a pretty competent player that I mix it up with every once in a while. He does like to give me action, so I'm going to try to take advantage of this, especially when I flop comes a beautiful ace, jack, six, all hearts. If he doesn't have an ace, doesn't have a heart, he probably doesn't like this flop too much. And I think if he had an ace, he probably would have raised coming in. So I fire 25. He thinks for a minute and lets it go. Player from middle positions opens for 15, and we get three callers for the 15. And when I'm in the small blind with 5-3 suited, I think it plays well multi-way. So I'm going to put in a call here and uh, see a flop. We end up going six ways to a flop that comes out nine, seven deuce with two hearts, the nine, seven hearts out on the board. So I got flush draw. I got backdoor straight draw. It's definitely worth a check call as long as the bet's not too outrageous. He bets $25. The other players fold out and uh, for $25, I'm definitely going to be continuing here. I put the money in. Big blind ends up folding out, so it's just going to be the two of us when we see a turn card. There's 140 in the center, and we get the Jack of Spades. Uh, not the greatest card in the world, but it does make it possible to represent a hand like 10-8. I check it over to him, seeing if he would slow down a little bit. I figure if he just has over cards, he might just check this one back, but he fires again, this time for $60. Uh, I don't really like it. I thought about raising here, trying to represent the straight, but he seems pretty confident, and I had a feeling he wasn't going to be going anywhere, so I just put it in the call. And we see a beautiful river card of a Ace of Hearts, so we make our flush. It's also a scare card for my opponent if he had something like an overpair, uh, and plus it looks like the flush draw got there. So if I had something else and I missed, this would be a great card to bluff at because everyone's scared of the ace, everyone's scared of the flush. So like if I had something like 6-8, uh, I would definitely be bluffing here. If I had just a pair and thinks he has maybe an over pair, this would be a great uh, card to bluff with. Uh, might catch an ace, might make a flush. Anyway, he knows that I'm capable of making these kind of bluffs and bets and he doesn't like his hand and he's trying to get a read off me. He does eventually show me that he has pocket sevens. So he's trying to get a read off of me, seeing what my reaction would be. Of course, I don't engage in any conversations during the hand. So he eventually just goes with his read and after a while he says, well, at least I'm going to make the vlog. Doug's a nice guy. If I'm going to pay someone off, might as well be him. And he makes the call. I tell him I made the flush, put the camera down, and flip my cards over. Take down a nice pot, and we're off to a good start. Well, it's been about an hour since that last hand. A couple players have changed, but uh, I think I still have a pretty good image. We get a bunch of limpers that come in, and I got 8-6 suited in the cutoff. I'm just going to go ahead and see if I can take this down with a raise. And I make it $25. I get a call from a player at the end of the table who's a friend of mine. Plays a fairly tight range. So I don't think he has too many weak cards in his hand right now. Mostly big aces, maybe king queens. So the flop comes 9-4-4, four, four, which is really a horrible flop for my raising range. But it's also really bad for his calling range, in my opinion. I think a big bet will get him to fold just about every one of his ace high hands, unless it's possibly ace king, which I feel he should have been raising when he came in. I figure his big pocket pairs should have been raising coming in. So the only thing I'm really concerned with are like medium sized pocket pairs, maybe pocket nines that might be slow playing. But I'm just going to go with it. He has a very short stack. So I go ahead and jam all in for his $115 remaining. He snap calls right away. I asked him if he has anything, and uh, he says, oh, yeah, I got a pair. 
He goes, you got a pair? And I go, no, I don't, but I got a flush now. And I rolled over my runner, runner flush. So I tried to punt this one off and got extremely lucky against pocket jacks. 10 minutes later, I finally pick up a real hand. I got two kings. There's one player that limps in. I raised to $20. I get a call from the player uh, on the button and from the original limper. So we're going to go three ways to this flop with $64 in the center. Flop comes out, jack, eight, six with two spades. Pretty good flop for my hand. I should be able to get some action off of some straight draws, flush draws, and of course the jack. I lead for $35. The player at the end of the table makes a very quick call. The other one doesn't take any time and gets out of the way. So it's just going to be the two of us. And we see probably the worst turn card that you can imagine. It's the Jack of Spades. So it pairs the top card, brings in the flush. Um, I decided to check this over to him. I figure if I bet, I'm only going to get called by someone with tons of equity or a better hand than me. So I might as well check it to him, see if he wants to take a stab at it. And he does for $45. Seems like a pretty weak bet. I'm pretty sure I have him beat here. And then when the Nine of Hearts comes on the river, I'm kind of wondering whether I do or not. That brings in a lot of straight draws. I check it over to him. He checks it back quickly. And I ended up winning this. But that uh, turn card really, really slowed down the action on this end. I'm in middle position with ace-10 offsuit. Decided to open up for $15. End up getting way too many callers for this. I got a caller player on my left, one at the end of the table, the next player, next player, next player. We're going to go six ways to this flop with $90 in the middle. Flop comes out ace-7, deuce, rainbow. Not a bad flop for ace-10. I'm going to go ahead and fire $40 here, find out exactly where I'm at. I get a quick call from the player on my left, another call from the player at the end of the table, and another one at the end of the table also. Two players fold out. All right, I'm going to take a moment to give a little poker lesson here about uh, flops like this. These are completely dry flops. There's no real straight draws or flush draws. And the bet size I use, $40, should eliminate hands like bottom pair and second pair. So when you bet it, when you have top pair, and you get three callers, well, there's only two other aces available. And so what is the other person calling with? And usually in my experience, when you get this type of action, somebody has a set. And so I'm going to be very cautious as I proceed here when the nine of spades comes on the turn. I decided to check it. It gets checked around to the player on the button and he decides that he's going to put in a wager here of $75. Now he has like 150-ish in his stack. So this seems like he's trying to just draw someone in. I'm thinking that he probably has a set and if he doesn't, the player behind me might have a set. But not only that, my ace isn't really very strong at all. So. Ace-10, I think, is just in the muck here. The other player does put in the call, and the river card comes as a six of spades. I mean, the only ace high I'm really beating is like an ace wheel draw or an ace eight. So uh, it's checked to the player at the end of the table. He goes all in. He gets a quick call. He showed that he had the ace three of spades, so he rivered me. The other player to my left showed that he had a set of deuces. So dodged a bullet there. That was basically the end of uh, day one. Uh, we played a little bit longer, but didn't get too much else. Um, as you can see on my stack, my photo, I have a little Bitcoin sitting on my stack. Uh, one of the customers gave it to me. He knows that I was, I'm into Bitcoin and he thought that I would enjoy that, which I have. Anyway, I would suggest that you look into it, getting Bitcoin. I think that it's going to be a, a valuable investment. But of course, this is not financial advice. It's just one poker player talking to another. Enough about Bitcoin. On to day two. Here we're in the small blind with ace king. There was a couple limpers. I raised to 20 out of the small blind and I get two callers. Flop comes ace, five, deuce, rainbow. Great flop for my hand. I'm going to play this one a little bit tricky. I decide to check it. It does get checked around. 
So I'm going to see the turn, which is a seven of diamonds. I'm going to check again. I figure if I like wave the white flag twice, someone would be brave enough to take a stab at it. I do have one player who jams all in for his remaining stack of $100. Of course, this is an easy call. I'm pretty sure I am way ahead. And when the river card comes as an ace, he goes, you're good. And I just roll over my ace king. No need to make him show. Eventually an end seat opens up, which is definitely better for filming. So I move over and we end up picking up King Jack suited in the hijack. King Jack's definitely a hand I want to be playing. I raise to $20. I get a call from the small blind, the big blind, and the limper. We're going to go four ways to this flop with $83 in the center. Flop comes out. King, 10, deuce, two spades, one diamond. So I got top pair, backdoor flush draw, and some backdoor straight draws. The big blind now leads out for $30. Uh, he gets quickly called by the player at the end of the table. Uh, I think that it's very likely that the, the player has some sort of draw here, either a queen 10 or a flush draw. I just decided to call and see what the turn brings before I get committed. Turn is a really bad card. It's a six of spades. Big blind now leads for $100. This looks like a flush all day long and twice on Sundays. I quickly get rid of my hand. The uh, small blind player looked uh, at his cards. He also had a king in his hand and mucks it. I'm almost positive this guy had a flush. All right, this next hand is really cool. So there's a, a $6 straddle and like five players that limp in for the $6. Uh, comes back around to me in the uh, big blind and I'm gonna put in a raise. I make it $56, hoping to narrow down the field or just take it down right here. The player in the straddle who's been having a rough day decides just to shove all in for $103. And it comes back around to the first limper. I don't know much about this player, uh, except that he bought in for $1,500, which usually indicates that he's played the game before. And he makes the cold call for the $103. Everyone else folds out. And here, I'm just going to put in the call. The under the gun player's raise actually reopens the betting for me, and I can try to squeeze him out. But he seems extremely sticky or ex extremely trappy. So I'm not sure whether I want to try to just isolate against him right now. Uh, he either has some sort of hand that he really likes or he's as sticky as hell and might call me down with some sort of ace rag and have me beat. So I decided to call just to see the, the flop, which comes out really well, nine, six, five with two clubs. So I got two over cards and a flush draw. I'm gonna be going with this hand. Now it's all about sizing. I want to make it so I have a good shove on the turn. So I make it 140 now and I plan to shove the rest of my chips of about $360 on the turn card. He thinks for a while and I'm just hoping and praying that he folds. If he does call, so be it. I'm going to fire big on the turn. Anyway, he lets it go and we get to see a run out which comes seven of hearts and a seven of spades. We miss everything but so did the player to our left. Our king high is going to beat his jack high, and we're going to take down this pot. Lucky us. So things are going pretty smoothly. We pick up two kings from the plus one position, open for a race to 15, end up getting five callers for the 15. You don't want to go six ways to a flop when you have pocket kings. There's probably a lot of stuff out there that's going to beat you. When we see a flop that comes ace high, rainbow. Yes, we are probably doomed right here. I'm just going to check it, hoping to get a free card. Maybe I can spike a king on the turn or something. It gets checked around to the player in the cutoff. He bets $25, rather a small bet. Small blind now jams all in for his remaining stack, which is $70. Of course, one of them has me beat, at least maybe both of them. So I just go ahead and I muck it. A uh, player in the uh, cutoff ends up putting in the call, and we're going to go see a run out. Well, once they got everything squared away, dealer puts up a eight of spades and a deuce of diamonds. 
Small blind ends up showing 8-7 offsuit. Hmm. There was no doubt in my mind that the other player had an ace in his hand. What else could he have? That was the end of day two. So day one, we won 165. Day two, we won $340. Uh, pretty slow. I was mostly just card dead. I think that I have been in this little rut or who knows whether it's a rut or normal because maybe I was running so well before that I don't even realize it when I'm just running normal. But it seems like I've been not catching the cards that I should be catching. I did play one other day this week, which is not included in this vlog, where it was extremely, extremely boring for several hours. And then I punted off my stack to a, a very conservative player. So even though it looks like I won 500 this week, I actually just won like just under $100. Anyway, I really do appreciate you guys tuning in and watching the videos. It uh, may, means the world to me. And if you haven't liked and subscribed by now, please do so. It does help the channel grow when trying to hit 10,000 subs. So every little sub will help. And uh, I really do appreciate it. I try to answer all the questions and comments that come in. So if you have any questions or comments, send one in to me. I'll respond to it. So until next time, good luck at the tables, and we'll see you back here soon.